First Snow in the Woods by Carl R. Sams II and Jean Stoic. The northern lights faded bright to dim, like a distant torch flickering across the cold night sky. The owl had seen all this before, but something was different. Something told him tonight he must begin a long journey south. In a morning meadow far away, fog tiptoed in without a sound. Dew sparkled on fragile webs where a family of deer grazed. A soft breeze crossed the meadow and whispered, Do you know what's happening? The spider spun her web and tidied up a fly into another tasty bundle. In the same meadow, a woolly bear inched his way along a fern and then onto another chew, chew, chewing, doing what woolly bears do. Dragonfly waited patiently for his wings to dry. He had hatched during the midsummer green long, long ago in dragonfly time. When will the new season begin? When dragonflies no longer fly. A noisy chipmunk broke the silence of the meadow. Hey, Spotty, you don't look so good, he called out, munching a tiny red crab apple. You're losing your spots and your coat is looking scruffy. Better start hiding your acorns, he warned. Why would I want to hide acorns, wondered the fawn. Acorns are everywhere. As the summer faded, the sweet nectar plants no longer flowered, so the monarch would follow a distant memory. On fragile wings, his heart song would lead him to a tropical garden thousands of miles away. The hummingbird heard the same green song playing in his head, a gentle memory of a faraway place. The tiny traveler would leave the meadow that morning. It was a time of change. Dewy webs hung on goldenrod and covered morning fields. So many woodland birds had left for distant places taking their songs with them. At the edge of the woods, a small squirrel chattered. Have you heard? asked the red squirrel. The great gray owl is on his way from the far north. He only stays here during the harshest winters. The wind ruffled her fur as she snatched a double acorn to tuck away. The first snow is coming. It's coming early. A woodchuck squeezed out of his hole, blinking his eyes. I'm only going to say this one time, announced the old grump. Hibernate, hibernate, hibernate. The sun melted the frost from the meadow, pushing away the fog and warming the shadows. Are you listening? asked Mother Doe, standing quietly. It's happening. The frost had silenced the wings of the dragonflies. The new season is here, she pleaded softly. Leaf by leaf, the green world gave way to blazing reds and golds. The painted turtle climbed onto a rock, warming himself in the fading rays of the sun. Soon I will bury myself into the thick mud and sleep until spring. That's what turtles do. A red maple leaf held stubbornly, twisting and turning on its stem. Let it happen, nudged the breeze. And so it did, breaking away soundlessly, floating down twisting and turning. The fawn was paying attention. Why are the leaves falling? Why is my coat changing? Where have so many of the birds gone? Asked the fawn. All things change, Mother Doe spoke in a gentle voice. All creatures must prepare and be ready to follow their heart song. The fawn didn't feel ready. Did he even have a heart song? Yet, as the evening slowly darkened the woods, he felt safe with his mother at his side. Each night stole more light from the day 
and held back the morning sun. Honking geese flew across the sky, announcing the changing season. The raccoon poked his head out of a snug hole in a tree to listen to morning sounds and sniff the cool air. He hunted frogs and crayfish in the moonlight along the muddy pond. At daybreak, he overturned rotten bark, finding plump grubs and runaway beetles. His heart song played softly in his head. Can you feel it? It's coming. Good morning. Good morning, said the two mice, peeking out from under the leaves. Today's the day. Today's the day, they both agreed. Today is the day, questioned the fawn with frosted breath. I, I don't understand. It's true, it's true, I've heard it too. The great gray owl is on his way down from the far north, called out the chickadee dee dee. Are you ready, dee dee? Ready, ready for what? questioned the fawn, as Mother Doe just kept munching her acorns. The snowshoe hare balanced on a white paw on a small tree as she chewed its tender needles. Soon her fur would be totally white. In winter, white was good. Suddenly a dark shadow soared above the rabbit's head. The great gray owl landed with ruffled feathers on the top of a swaying spruce. He had ridden the north winds many miles with a storm on his tail. Creatures of the forest, prepare. The first winter storm is here. I, I'm not ready, said the fawn, standing all alone. The snowflakes floated downward, covering the meadow. What's happening? Why can't everything stay the same? The wind turned colder, and the snow fell harder. The fawn shook the wet snow from his ears. I don't like this. The robin agreed. He wished he had left earlier, leaving his sweet berries behind. Hey, where is your home? called a frantic chipmunk. Don't you know you need a hole? Here, I'll help you dig. I'll make it big. A hole in the ground? wondered the fawn. He shook his head. But where is my home? Where should I go? I'm not ready. You are ready, Mother Doe spoke softly as she appeared out of the storm. You are ready for the first snow of the season. Come, follow me. We will travel with the rest of our family to the cedar swamp. There we'll find food and shelter and escape the winter winds. The owl watched from above as the small family of deer made their way down, down, down to the low ground where the cedar trees grew thick. Whistling winds and white snow swirled and whirled all through the night. And then, silence. The fawn woke up with deep snow all around him. The whiteness made him blink. Nicely done. You are prepared. You're almost as plump as me, said the fox squirrel and that thick winter coat will keep you warm and dry. As the fawn looked about, he heard the familiar calls of the winter birds, chickadees, cardinals, and blue jays. A calm came over him as he listened to the snow falling softly. Now he knew he was ready. He had found his winter home. He had heard his heart song. The end. This is the white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer is the deer that you see commonly in fields and on forest edges here in Wisconsin.
The white-tailed deer is a large animal with a long skinny neck and long skinny legs. They have large ears and a narrow face and a white tail they flag when there's danger. The male deer is called a buck and he has antlers on his head. The female deer is called a doe. She does not have antlers on her head. Deer are very good at camouflaging. So in the distance, if you look very carefully in the scene, there are a few deer in the field, but their camouflaged coat hides them. Deer in the winter are camouflaged to look like the bark on the trees. But as spring comes along, that thick, heavy coat is shed and a brighter orangish colored coat reveals itself beneath that for the summer. So in summer, they're camouflaged more toward the green and the color in the forest. Deer are herbivores and they browse among the plants along the forest floor and in fields. So that their top jaw does not have teeth or incisors on the front. They have a hard plate on the front of their jaw on the top. They have all their molars in the back that help them to chew the bottom. You can see the incisors on the bottom jaw. And that's what they use to scrape the foliage in their food from the ground so that they're able to break that off, pressing up against that hard plate on their top jaw. Deer also have antlers. Antlers are not horns because antlers fall off in the winter. You can see how this deer's antlers have fallen off recently. When the antlers start to grow back, they grow as little nubs that are covered in velvet. That velvet helps to protect them as they grow. They actually receive blood from the deer to help them to grow larger. As summer passes, the velvet starts to peel away and by fall, the velvet completely comes off of the deer's antlers. Once winter arrives, those antlers lose the blood flow and then eventually fall off of the deer's head. In the white-tailed deer, only the male grows antlers. The female does not grow antlers. You can see on this female, she has a little bit of a bulge in her belly. That's because she is pregnant. So the deer mate in the fall, and then the female carries that baby in her belly until spring. Usually around May or maybe June, depending on the weather, is when they give birth. When they give birth, the fawn is fully developed. The eyes are open. It doesn't have any teeth but it has fur and it can stand up. Typically though, the mom hides the baby somewhere where the baby doesn't move. Even if something comes up to check it out, the baby typically does not really move very much when it's just a week or so old, and it doesn't have a scent. This is to help to keep it safe while mom goes and eats. Fawns drink milk from their mothers. While they're drinking that milk, mom cleans them up and keeps them free of any scent. Sometimes fawns will clean each other to keep them free of scent as well. This helps to protect them from predators such as coyotes and wolves. Once the fawns become larger and are able to move a little bit better, they follow mom around. They still nurse from her, but as their teeth grow bigger, they start to learn to eat and browse just like mom does. Mom spends most of her time with the fawns, but once in a while she will leave them on their own. This way the fawns are learning how to use their senses and they become more aware of their environment and are able to look and listen to see if there's any danger nearby. As the fawns grow older and it gets closer to fall, they spend more time grazing and less time nursing. Their teeth have grown larger as the summer has passed and they no longer need to drink her milk for nourishment. So then she starts to reject them.
The fawns continue to grow larger as summer turns into fall and they learn to use their senses completely so that when fall comes, there's a risk of them being independent and that way they have already learned how to use their ears to hear all around them, their eyes to see all around them, especially since their eyes are on the sides of their heads, and the ability to somewhat communicate using their tails and stamping their feet. Once fall arrives, the bucks are getting ready for mating season again. This season is called rut. When the bucks are in rut, they will often be aggressive toward each other. They use their antlers to show their aggression toward each other. Sometimes these antlers can get tangled and that can be really bad for the bucks. But the buck that is the strongest and the one that wins is the one that wins the doe. And the buck that wins the doe is the one who's able to mate with her so that she can have babies again come next spring. The bucks and does will stay together for a short time, but typically the does will go back and they will overwinter with the fawns as they become yearlings and these fawns grow larger. The bucks tend to be more isolated and spend much of their winters alone.